Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Path of Exile video, and I'm gonna tackle a very quick PSA thing because I'm getting asked a lot about these questions pretty much every stream for the past soon to be 90 years in Path of Exile. And since it is not common knowledge, I want to tackle this before the league launch, make sure people understand the process of how minions actually work. And um, it's it doesn't seem to be common knowledge. And a lot of these questions arise as soon as there's something new that's coming in, either in the form of a support gem or a new skill, or in this case, uh, new items, such as the gloves that are, we're going to be seeing that allows us to impale from spell damage. Um, so I think it's really important to point out a few things with this PSA, and that is how minions work. So essentially, the minions have a, a set of different tags. I'm going to be using a very specific minion uh, that I think will be very good as a league starter for the upcoming league as a reference point for this, and that will be Raging Spirits. Now, Raging Spirits, the way they're summoned is that it's a, it's a blue gem, which is a casted uh, spell, which has tagged spell, minion, duration, and fire. And what then happens is that the process of this uh, ability is that you are casting a spell, which is a fire spell, which summons a minion that has a duration. That's why they have spell, minion, duration, and fire tags. Now, what will actually work to scale the minion in this case? Because they're tagged with spell, they're tagged with fire, duration, and minions, right? So the thing is, if you have increased cast speed... Welcome <laughs> to the crew. Thank you, Cloud, for the sub, man. Appreciate Depending it. Doom. So the thing is, if you have things like increased cast speed with fire spells or fire skills, that will affect the cast speed of you summoning the minion. If you have, for example, increased damage to fire spells, or for example, added flat damage to spells, which would then affect both the tag of spells as well as uh, fire. Welcome to the crew life. Thank you, Corridor, for the seven months, man. Uh, these things actually only affect the initial stage of the process of summoning these minions. So basically what happens with uh, SRS in this specific example is that the spell and fire uh, tags is only for the process of you casting the, um, the spell that summons them. After having them summoned, you have then created a unique entity. And that's where it really separates from the rest of the game. Because uh, things like totems, traps, and mines, they are essentially reflections of yourself, uh, at which point you are only using the ability yourself to summon it. So spells and fires will affect it, and only things that affect the duration actually translates over to the minion itself. And unlike totem traps and mines, which are reflections of yourself, are actually affected by stats that you get. So if we take a look at Path of Building, for example, this is an SRS build, uh, as you can see here on the tree, there are no modifiers on the tree that is giving me damage because that does not apply to the minion. If I then take a look at something like a lower budded version, which is more commonly used, you can see here that we have no modifiers that is specifically tagged with minion. For example, in During Bond, we have Lord of the Dead that specifically says minions deal increased damage, minions have increased HP. And you have nodes like uh, the Redemption, Minion Damage, Minion does this, Minions does that, Spiritual Command, Minions gets Attack Speed and Cast Speed, and you have the Sacrifice, Minions gets this, Minions get that, right? So these things definitely just straight up affect the approach of what the Minions will actually get. However, if you're playing a Totem build or a Trap build or a Mind build or Self-Casting build or an Attacking build, things like uh, nodes like this, for example, that says you get increased damage, these will affect those things, but will not affect the minion. And if we then take a look at things like the SRS as an example, so explosive impact says increased air effect and increased fire damage, realistically, with the way the logical approach to how skill gems works in Path of Exile, this should increase the SRS damage, but it does not. And the reason for this is, again, because the minion itself is a separate entity, and that's very hard to explain, which is what I'm trying to do with this video, I guess. Um, because what really happens is that you create something that is not you. You create an ally, and this ally has its own stats, its own capabilities, its own behavior, which is obviously, you know, depending on which type of minion it is, uh, but that behavior and the stats they have are separated. 
And in path of building, you can actually see these things by going into the calculation and taking whichever socket group you have the minion in and checking the minion stats uh, bar right there. In here, you can actually see when you're fiddling around with path ability to see what actually affects it and what doesn't affect it. And on the right hand side, you'll actually see its defensive stats as well. Uh, for example, in the low budget version, it has a 97% accuracy. My bill guide does cover details such as the importance of getting grave pack, for example, potentially getting the idea of getting minion accuracy, mastery, if you so will. Uh, or you can go for a, a normal ghastly jewels that provides accuracy as well. Uh, and the jewels we're using gives minion stats, not our uh, stats to ourselves. So where do you find the information outside of PUB then? And that's where it gets really complicated because in PathX, well, the only way we can get this detailed information is through the PUEDB. So if I go to PUEDB's website to search for Summon Radiant Spirits, this is the data mine information. And this allows me to look at the actual ability and I can look at the Summon Skull. And in here, I'll see a lot more information that is not existing on the actual skill gem because these things are hidden. So for example, here I'll learn that 100% of its physical damage uh, is converted to fire, which is a monster modifier. I'm not going to talk too much about conversions, but this basically means that they have 100% physical damage, but they are converting all of that into fire. Also have extra little bit of physical damage as a modifier on the monster itself. Uh, and then they, if you scroll down on this list, you can see that they have their different abilities. Spectres are very complex when it comes to this uh, specific topic, but for SOS it's a bit easier. So in here, they have a melee attack. That's it. They will just straight up do melee attacks. So knowing this information, we can now see that they have a 5% base crit. They have a base attack time of 0 0.57 seconds, and they are converting their physical into fire damage. Less than three. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, so knowing this information, we can now verify that uh, they also have 40% elemental rest with a 20% chaos rest, if you want to take a look at that, which is the baseline resistance for the majority of minions in the game, actually. So um, what will then work for the SRS specifically? Well, you're not going to be linking it with increased spell damage or burning damage or fire damage and those things. Uh, you will instead look at the fact that they are actually a melee attacking unit. This means that support gems that will affect a melee attack uh, uh, will then work, such as melee splash, multi-strike, melee physical will work, just because they have 100% physical damage. You can have elemental damage with attacks, because again, they're converting their entire physical damage portion into an element, allowing you to then run elemental damage with attack support, ruthless and stuff like that. And this is why it gets very, very tricky to understand how minions work. But this PSA video is basically going to be referring to the fact that Despite minion skill gems having certain tags, does not mean that those tags allows you to have modifiers in your gear or on the tree that will affect those things. And since they are separate entities, it's also very important to note that they do not get affected by nodes you pick up on the tree that doesn't specifically say that it affects minions, such as resolute techniques, because it says that your hits can't be evaded and you can't deal any crits. This does not affect minions, but it would affect things like traps, totems, or mines, which are, again, reflections of yourself. Uh, another little detail of this is certain, certain other minion abilities that actually has, um, uh, instead of a summoning process, because SRS actually never hits anything when you summon, it's a fire spell tag. You can actually get plus added flat damage to the spell, but because the SRS summoning process doesn't actually have a hit component, it doesn't do anything. Another ability that is a minion build, a mini ability that does have a hit component is um, Absolution. Absolution is similar to Dominating Blow, where you are hitting enemies with the actual ability and doing damage, and the summoning process is gated or designed in the modifier of the skill gem based off the hits you're doing. Either it's a percent chance in this case to summon a sentinel when you're hitting a rare or unique enemy, or it's on kill, or the base duration of one second if the enemy dies shortly after being hit with the ability. So these things would be, for example, Absolution has an AoE type, but also has spell, minion duration, AoE, physical, and lightning, and that's because it actually deals 100% physical damage with 50% of that uh, converted to lightning, which is why we're using the physical lightning support, making all of the damage lightning damage. Now, uh, what this does is this presents us with the opportunity to um have modifiers that affect spell damage such as spell or lightning 
in this case, or even physical damage for the spells, which will scale your damage. But that damage that you are getting is not going to be scaling the minion unless it specifically states that it affects minions. And in this little PSA to round things off, I do want to mention the fact that there are some exclusions to this rule. Uh, magic find stats that you have actually affects minions as well. Uh, Headhunter, when you and when your minions kill something, the owner of the minion will actually be the one stealing the modifier. Same thing goes with learning, uh, uh, inspired learning. And the other exception is things like the Necromantic Aegis. Necromantic Aegis makes it so that all the bonuses from an equipped shield applies to your minions instead of you. So if I take a look at this PUB and look at the shield here, that means that the chance to block the armor, the implicit 25 life, the all of the explicit modifiers in this shield, which is, would be the increased armor, the uh, which is actually local, so that's the 1084 armor, and the 85 life and the recovery life on block, all of these stats would actually apply to your minions instead of you. The only thing you have left on your character if you take Necromantic Aegis is the fact that you are actually holding a shield that does nothing. But what that allows you to do is still use shield charge. That's the only thing that's going to be stated with Necr Necromantic Aegis specifically. So again, the TLDR version of this is essentially, unless the modifier specifically states that it affects minions, you can, in 99% of the cases, assume that the modifier you're about to take or a tree node or gear modifiers will not affect your minions. This includes things like the new gloves that will allow our spells to impale. That's all I have to say. Hope this video was useful for you. Um, just hit the like button, subscribe for more content. I appreciate all the support, guys. We're going out aiming to hit 70,000 subs before the league launches, which is in, what, five days from now. So thanks so much for tuning in, boys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, stay safe, keep rocking.